All right, guys, welcome back. And in this episode, uh, this is episode number three. So if you missed the first two uh, episodes where I pretty much do Q&A about how I started, um, I have a lot of questions from trainers that I answer. Um, and today I'm going to be answering a bunch of really good questions. Uh, this might be a longer video. Um, so if so, um, I'm going to try to give as much value as I can. And before we get there, I just want to say thanks to all of the new subscribers who have subscribed on YouTube um, or who have subscribed on my email newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed to my email newsletter, uh, you can go ahead and do that right now. Just go to um, below this video. There's a first link there. It's free. Uh, you can join my newsletter. This is a great way to get in contact with me um, this way. If you have any questions, you can always ask me there. Um, and also, I give a lot of valuable free content um, through my newsletter that's different than what you'll see on YouTube. So the, I'm going to dig straight into these questions. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I'm talking about here, comment below um, the video, and then um, I'll try to get back to you there. So here's the first question, and this is from Josh. Uh, Josh is actually one of our consulting clients right now. He's going through our four-week business course, and he asked a question that I've gotten a lot. Um, I just haven't really taken the time to answer this on a video. And so his question is, what do you put on your flyers or cards for advertising? And I'm going to just tell you exactly how I did this and how I would recommend you doing this. So I remember at the beginning for me, I wanted to try to get my message out there as much as I could. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I was really shy when I started. So it was hard for me to network and talk with other people about what I do. So I thought that me giving flyers and me putting you know business cards at Starbucks or restaurants or whatever, I thought that would help me get my message out there. And in one sense, it does because people see it. Um, and my problem is I just didn't really have a well put together flyer or card that would draw attraction to me. And so what I realized was instead of me, you know, trying to put something together that I think looks good, I needed to find someone who actually puts together really good flyers and stuff like that, because I'm not a very creative person, but I will tell you what you need to have on it. So number one, it needs to have your academy name. So if you're doing private training, group training, whatever it is, you need to have your academy name um, on there. That needs to be kind of bold. That needs to be big. It needs to stand out. So that's the first thing. And then under that, I would pretty much just describe what it is you do, what it is you specialize in. And I see a lot of people, they put like private training, group training, camps, clinics, speed and agility training. They put all of these bullet points um, I wouldn't want you to do that because that means that you're just kind of the guy who can do everything. I want you to be more specific. So think about what it is that you specialize in. So you need to have that. And then you need to have something that draws them to contact you. So I know when I used to do this, I would put um, free trial session or free trial week of training. And this is something that gets people interested. It piques their interest. They're like, okay, cool. Um, I can come to this for free. And the only way they can do that is if they call me though. And I see a lot of times people don't put their number. They just put a website and I never want to just rely on someone coming to my website later. I want them to take action now and call me. And this way I can actually get on the phone. And I know Josh right now is going through my course where I break down how to talk to parents over the phone. What are the right questions? Um, how to take someone who's on the, over the phone who's never trained with you, how to get them to a session within the next week. And, you know, from there, he can take it, take those steps uh, once he gets on the phone. But for you, if you are looking to put something together, you need to be bold with what you offer and you need to offer something. Don't don't just give a flyer or a card, you know, with your website on it. It needs to have your phone number. It can have your website. I think if you have a site, that's great. A lot of trainers out there, um, they don't have their own site. They use CoachUp. Um, I would recommend not doing that. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to put a flyer and you're sending people to CoachUp, then they're going to go to CoachUp and see all of your competitors. Um, so that's not going to be a smart way of doing this. 
So if you have your own site, great. Um, I'm actually launching something in the next couple of weeks for trainers who need help with their website. I'm basically going to license my website. And I'm very excited about this because it's going to be a done for you system. Like um, having everything you need for a website that's going to rank you high on Google. Um, it's going to do everything for your payments. Everything that I have built within my own academy, I'm going to put that out there. Um, so look for that coming soon. Um, so to, to kind of finish your answer, Josh, um, yes, doing flyers, having all that's great, but there needs to be a call to action. And that simply just means you need to lead them to do something after they look at it. And I, most people, I know for me, like I go out to the field all the time and other trainers put uh, their information on my car because they put it on everyone else's car. And, you know, that stuff can work. It really depends on how your systems and processes are once you get on the phone. You know, are you going to get on the phone and not know what to say? Or are you going to get on the phone and be confident knowing that, okay, I put a thousand flyers out there this weekend. And if I get 20 phone calls, I'm going to convert five to 10% of those people. And that would actually be a win depending on how you price your programs. Um, you could do that every single weekend at the fields and get your message out there and get people to call you on the phone. That's great. Um, one thing I realized though about flyers and business cards and doing all that, you know, that stuff can work and it has worked for me, but I found a way that works better. And what I realized was if I'm putting a message on someone's card or, or I'm putting something at Starbucks, those people who see that don't know me. They've, they never met me. All they see is they just see a marketing message. And it's kind of the same way when you watch a commercial. You don't really know the people who've made a Mercedes car. All you see is like it's constantly in your face. And that might make you want that. Um, but your initial reaction is like, man, like I see this all the time. Um, and so what I would rather do is I would rather talk to someone who has a Mercedes car and be able to go ride in the, in the car and see how it is. And I look at this the same way with soccer training you are going to have a much higher success rate through a referral program or through networking with a director of a club or a director of the YMCA or any youth organization out there. And this is how it works is if you network with them and they send an email or they make some phone calls to other coaches, other parents who have kids that would like to join your program, that's a lot easier than those same parents seeing a marketing message from you that if they haven't met you yet. So this way there's trust that the parents on the receiving end, they're, they're learning from the director. Oh man, like Ben or, you know, Tom or Josh is a great trainer and you guys should go check out his free program. That is a lot easier than you putting out flyers. So I hope you can understand that. If you if you don't, just shoot me a message, um, comment below this video. But this is something that's a lot easier than trying to put flyers. And that's what I do right now. Um, you know, I'm not training a ton of players right now. Uh, that's really not my focus. My focus is to help more coaches um, help more players. That's the point of this brand here, Soccer Entrepreneur. But I will tell you, um, if I had the choice of putting out flyers or just networking with, um, you know, clubs, organizations, and getting in front of the people who have influence over parents, I would always do that all day um, over flyers, just because I know that if I can have one conversation with someone who has influence over like 500 people, then whenever they email out for me or call or do whatever, the chances of me taking those people and turning them into actual clients is very high. Um, it's a lot higher than if I put something on their windshield um, during one of their games. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and so here's the next one here. Um, let's see here. And this is a common question I get as well. Should you put your rates on your website? So should you advertise how much your training is? And I have two answers for this because I've done it two different ways. So back in the day when I was starting I always put my prices on my website because I always thought that if someone came to my website, if they contacted me, then they already saw the price. And so I knew that they had probably had a better chance of committing to my program. And 
the problem that I found with that is not everyone sees your price page. Um, and so either way, if they see your price page or not, you're always going to have to sell them over the phone about you know why they should be in your program. So if you have your prices or not, you're going to have to do that anyways. Um, and that's something I talk about a lot in my four week program. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that now, but I, I want to kind of talk about why you should or why you shouldn't have it on your site. And a lot of people who I'm helping right now, a lot of coaches around the US or even some in Australia, um, I advise them to have their price on their site because I want them to show boldness about what they offer and include exactly what you offer within those programs. And a lot of coaches ask me, well, if I do that, you know, other competitors are gonna see. And the way I look at that is if you're worried about what someone else is providing, what they're offering, then that's going to devalue your service. So you need to know that whatever you're doing is better. It's the best. Um, and someone could be charging the same amount or they could be undercutting you and trying to offer the same thing. Ultimately, they're not going to work as hard as you. They're not going to care as much as you. And, and they're not going to succeed in the long term. And that's how I look at it for me. There's so many people in the past who've ripped my website, they've ripped testimonials, they've copied and pasted everything. Like, I don't care about what they do. They're not going to care as much as I do about kids and their success. And they're in it for the short, short term. Like, they're not doing this for a career. And so I don't worry about people like that. So when you have your own prices, like, that can show boldness. Um, that can be great. And that can show parents before you even get on the phone, if they see that page, um, that this is what, you know, this is what it's going to cost if you're going to commit to our program. Um, and I think it's very good to, on your site, um, to have, to lay out what your commitment is. You know, is it something that's month to month? Is it a three month commitment? Is it a one year commitment? You know, what is your commitment? Um, that's something that you need to have. And so I'm going to tell you why I personally don't have my prices on my site. And I don't want to contradict what I just said. But for people starting off, I do think it's good to have your price. For someone who's more experienced, uh, like me, I mean, I've doing I've been doing this for eight nine years now. I'm coming up on almost a decade of training. Um, for someone like me who's been doing this for a while, my goal when I talk to or when I when someone comes to my website is to collect information. I want to follow up with them and see if they are the right fit. And because I have multiple points of entry into my program. I mean, I will have private training. That's like our highest price program. I have group training, which is medium price. And then I'll have like clinics that are, you know, smaller price. I have different points of entry. I want to talk to every parent over the phone who has questions about, you know, their son or daughter and, you know, what's the best fit for them. But for me, I interview the parents. I, I don't just want people to come to my website and select private training and then show up to a session next week. And this is what CoachUp does. Um, and I, I don't want to keep ripping on CoachUp uh, because I think that's a very valuable tool for a lot of trainers out there. But I don't want to have my price on my website because I want to see what's the best fit for the individual player and the family who I talk to before they I even, you know, tell them about my prices over the phone. I want to know, you know, what it is that they're looking for. What, what are the problems? What are the things that, you know, Johnny needs help with? And then I can recommend and advise a program for them at that point. And the reason why I don't, the other reason why I don't have my price on my website is because in my city, and it might be different in yours, like there's other people who do that. They have their prices and that's great. I want to make mine look a little bit more unique where if you're going to figure that out, you have to get on the phone with me. Um, and I don't want my price to scare people away. I don't want that to be something where they're like, oh, wow, like he only has his private training price on there. We can't afford that. I don't want to do that. And as you've, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that my program is certainly not for everybody. Um, I'm very picky with who I train, but me getting on the phone that's the thing that pre-qualifies people, whether or not I'm going to accept it in my program or not. And that's before I ever train the player. Um, so that's something that I do. Um, and I don't want someone who's shopping right now for private training to go 
to coach up, they see something that's thirty dollars, and then they come to my site, and it's like six hundred dollars, and they're like, "Wow, like th there's no way we're going to do that." I want there to be exclusivity behind what I do, and this way, I know when when someone comes to my contact us page, they enter in their information. I know exactly that they want to be committed because it is on my website where I talk about the commitments. Um, I talk about who I train, who I don't train. Um, all those things are there. Um, but I know when I get on the phone, my number one primary objective over the phone is to see how I can help or if I can help. If I cannot help, I'm not going to train that player. Um, and then, you know, over time, throughout that conversation, I will close with, you know, how, you know, what the investment is for the program, um, depending on what they're looking for. But if they just come to my site or if they go to coach up and they see how much I charge per hour, that is the opposite way you want parents to think. And this is what they're conditioned to right now. They, they think just because they see a number next to someone's name, that's how much that person's worth. And I don't like that, that model because they're always going to compare you versus someone else. And if someone's looking to save money, they're never going to train with you um, when, when they do it that way. Or you have to devalue your service and train a lot more players to make more money than someone else who is maybe training a fraction of the players you're training and maybe they're charging way, way more. So you have to be very smart about how you do that. And these are things that I like to help coaches with on an individual basis because Everyone has different prices. Everybody's programs are different. What they offer, every, no one's the same. Um, so that's how I would answer that question. So should you put your rates on your website? You can. Um, just know that if you do, um, you need to include everything that you're offering. Um, if you don't, like me, then you still need to lead the conversation in a way where you are looking to help. You're not looking to sell anything. This is the, this is the thing that... I see so many people go wrong with is when they get on the phone, they feel like they have to justify, you know, why you should train or, or why your son or daughter should train, you know, with, with me. And I, I don't, I don't like that idea. I like to see how I can help. If I can help, you know, then we'll move forward with that conversation. So that's my answer there. Um, I don't, I hope that's not confusing, but you can definitely do it. I used to in the past. I don't anymore. Uh, I told you the reason why I don't. Um, and you can do that kind of however you want. And so the last question here I see, and I think this is um, something that I touched on a little bit, and I think in the first episode, but I, I'm not sure how much, you know, in depth I, I went on this. So the question is, is an academy much deeper than just training services? And this is something that Jaime Garcia asked me. And I think this is a great question. And I want to go into a lot of depth here because when someone gets on my newsletter and they ask, Hey Ben, like, what exactly do you do? Um, for me, I think it's kind of a loaded question because in the past, and I'm not talking about right now, I'm talking about in the past, I've tested so many different things as far as programs for players. And this is why, when I talk about building a soccer academy, I am not talking about building teams. I'm not talking about coaching. I'm talking about training. And th this is a kind of a misconception that I think a lot of people think it have me is they think I have a club here. I don't. My training is independent. I'm not linked with any clubs out there. Um, I do everything. It's all supplemental training for players. And so with that being said, you can be as creative as you want when it comes down to your training and offer hundreds of different programs. And I know for me personally, I have done private one-on-one -on -one training. I've done group training. Uh, a couple years ago, we hired out a goalie to do goalie training. We've done speed and agility training. I've done mindset training, uh, college consulting, fitness training. I mean, there's so many different levels of how you can go you know deeper and deeper within private training for what you do um, so the, to answer your question Jaime yes it is way deeper than just private training or just one thing and that comes down to two things number one knowing who your audience is so if you are training kids who are like five to eight years old 
then what you offer them needs to be obviously fun. It needs to be something that kids love coming to, parents love it. Um, you're not going to probably want to offer, you know, conditioning training to kids that are that age. You could probably maybe do speed and agility, something fun like that. Um, and you're probably not going to want to do mindset training or, you know, more advanced things for kids who are older. So you have to tailor your training based on your audience. That's the number one thing I would tell you. If you're going to look to do anything, do that. And the number two thing is never start a new program until the first one you start is automated. And so here's what I mean by that. Let's say you have, you're, you're just starting and you're doing private training and, and you like doing one-on-one -on -one training, but you don't have your system set up yet. You, you, you don't know, have a good way of people paying you. You don't have a good way of, of taking someone of a phone and getting them to be, in your, uh, be a new client or you're getting them to your next session. If you don't have that set up yet, then I would never recommend starting another program because then you're going to be working too much on two separate things and it's going to be confusing. And you're not going to know when you get on the phone with parents about what to do um, or how to market your programs. So you need to automate and that just means you need to know, okay, I have this on lockdown. I know exactly what to do when someone calls me and we're going to move forward with a certain program. And once that's set up, now I can offer something different to different players that are within the same age group, or I can offer something different to the same players who I'm already training. And I'm going to make another video about this later, about why you should be offering more services to the players who you're currently training and like how that is probably the easiest way to grow your business. Um, but for right now, I want you to know that, yes, it's not just one thing. You can be as creative as you want and you can streamline everything in a way where it's automated through the internet. Um, if you follow my book, if you follow you know what I teach um, in my book or in my four week course, I talk about simplifying everything. I don't want it to be confusing where you don't know what you're doing. And this is the thing, and I've said this in multiple videos, this is why I'm here to help. You know, most trainers out there don't understand the business and that's okay. Like that's why I created this channel. I, I want to clarify the business and make the business easy and fun for you. Um, this way you can focus all of your energy on the training. Um, and so if you try to complicate things though with your business, it's going to be very difficult to be good at marketing your business if you are complicated. If you don't have everything set up the right way, then if you're trying to make multiple programs, none of those will succeed. And that's why I'd rather you be laser focused on one thing at a time, you know, do it well, automate it. And once you know that that's set up, great, like let's create something else. And then like, let's keep doing that. And that's the same advice I would give you if you're gonna hire someone. You never wanna bring somebody on into anything unless you know that you have personally done it yourself, it works, and now you can teach somebody else how to do it and you can streamline it. And the same way I look at it, like for Subway, Subway, um, I don't think is the best restaurant um, in the world, but they have a system that anybody can come in and learn and do and duplicate. And that makes it easy for the employee. That makes it easy for Subway. They can grow their company that way. And for private training, I look at it the same way. You don't want to bring anyone else on or start a new program until you know this is working really, really well. And now maybe someone else can come on or I can start a new program, um, a different type of training program that's going to bring on new clients. So that's it for today's video, guys. Um, I know this is a little bit longer. Um, thanks for sticking around. If you have any questions, um, I've created a bunch of resources below this video. So if you are a brand new trainer um, and you're looking to start your academy and you want to have a business based around private training, group training, camps, clinics, go check out my book called The Startup Soccer Academy. Um, that's going to really lay down the foundation about how to start um, the right way and how to legally start your business. Um, and then if you want to dig deeper into these types of things, you want to check out my four-week business course. Uh, right now, we've had over 12 people who've gone through this course. Um, these guys and girls have gotten great results. A lot of them are doing this full-time now. Um, we also have a consulting program. This is like our highest level program for coaches who want my one-on-one -on -one help. Um, but either way, go check out those resources below this video. They're in the description box. 
Uh, so just click on the description. You can go check those out. Um, and I would love to help you out. So that's it. I'll catch you next time.